<laughs> it's shift change at one of the world's most dangerous work sites. The new crew dons helmets and jackets to protect themselves from being blown to pieces. This is an all-female mine-clearing unit in western Kosovo. It's funded by Norway, but it's run by Delfina Lauka, an ethnic Albanian as proud of her work as she's determined to finish it. For example, me, I was not in Ucheka or something, you know, and now, yeah, in KLA, but in this case, uh, now I have a chance to help my people to take off the mines from our land. Across Kosovo, small units like this are fighting to destroy a deadly legacy. 17 months of civil warfare and 78 days of NATO bombing left Kosovo littered with unexploded ordnance. Kosovo's D-miners are clearing ordnance at a speed that's past all expectations. They've already destroyed more than 21,000 mines and 11,000 unexploded cluster bombs. That's more than two-thirds of what they estimate to be the total, and it's already paying off. Some people think uh, mines are actually being laid faster than they're clearing. It's not the case. And, uh, and Shane Pritchard are, is a uh, former Australian soldier turned general, professional D-miner. He's a veteran of Africa and the former Soviet they, Union. But Kosovo uh, was the first place he can envisage finishing the job. Yeah, in Abkhazia and Somaliland is, uh, is, is very difficult um, because there's a lack of funding there um, and it's, it's hard to, uh, to see a light at the end of the tunnel. Here also we're very lucky because we have uh, Serb records. The peace deal gave them a vital head start. Yugoslavia agreed to hand over maps of where Serb security forces had laid mines. It saved the D-miners from spending thousands of hours checking areas that were never mined. Instead, they've been able to target the most dangerous areas first. This gully was a former supply route for the KLA. The Serbs peppered it with anti-personnel mines. No one seemed concerned that it was right next to a village. With the uh, team leader and I, we believe that this gully was, uh, was a, a likely location for the mines. And... Uh, and after the D-miners have come through here, we've already identified uh, a PMA-2. This is all rigged up for detonation, and, uh, and when we get ahead of here, they can, they can destroy it. How many of these do you think there might be in this gully? The Serb records indicate about 60 mines in this gully. And what would happen if someone trod on that? In the short term, they'd, they'd blow their foot off, and in the long term, they'd probably require a below-knee amputation. Right, and you've got kids playing in this area as close to a village? Yep, absolutely. As you can see... Um, over there, mates, the village, and, uh, and the local people have been advised by us to stay out of this area. While Serb maps show the general area, Shane has found them dangerously unreliable for pinpointing mines. A lot of the Serb records are in fact wrong, and because people are focused on, on these records being uh, correct, you can get yourself into trouble by stepping into a minefield uh, thinking that it's not the, not the right place. Shane's unit has so far escaped injury, not Delfina's. One of the women, Saranda, walks with an artificial limb. Last May, while she was clearing a gully, she slipped onto a mine. It must have been terrible. Oh, yes. But Saranda tells only part of the story. At the time, she begged the medics not to help her, pleading to be left to die. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. She said to us, I don't want any more to live because I, I lose my life. I'm sorry, but um, it was really... I never will forget that day, really. Never. I didn't expect accident in my platoon. Because girls, they are very, very hard worker, you know. 
We are working very careful, but she had bad luck. And yet, that come back to work, she's come back to work. Yeah, she's come back to work, but not like the minor. But it's it's okay for her. I'm happy for her, really. Within three weeks, every one of Saranda's co-workers was back clearing mines. They are more strong now, you know, more tough. Very brave. Yeah, very brave. Since her injury, Saranda can no longer clear mines. Now she teaches children to avoid them. They have become so much a part of everyday life that the children's songs are now about danger and dying. But mines are not the only hazard for children. NATO dropped 31,000 cluster bomb units. Each one delivered 147 cluster bombs, all of them scattering over a huge area. Many didn't explode, and some have been found by children. What it is, is uh, especially the American ones, are, are bright yellow with a parachute on them. And uh, a lot of kids see them and, and think it's a toy, pick them up, and, and usually end in uh, fatality. Unexploded cluster bombs may be on the surface, but in vegetation they can be almost impossible to find. Today, Shane's unit is trying to clear a large hilltop beside a highway. This was a Serb position. Uh, they had anti-aircraft, tanks and also personnel with bunkers littered throughout this hill. And what happened was the NATO put in some strikes on this position and there was about 22 cluster bomb units in the area. That means more than 3,000 cluster bombs were dropped here and hundreds could have failed to explode. The official record is about 3%, I think, but uh, we've found here in Kosovo it's been up closer to 15 20% of these cluster bomb lots don't explode. It's this initial search that's the most dangerous time of all. But that could be about to change. Mine clearers are now trialling what could be the biggest breakthrough yet in finding UXO. It's an airship normally used for advertising sport or beer. But in an unusual marriage between commercial sponsors and the British Defence Ministry, it's been converted into the world's first airborne mineseeker. If we find an area of interest, we think perhaps it's worth a closer look. We'll go from a high altitude to a low altitude and use the, uh, the optical qualities of our camera uh, to take uh, as many detailed images as possible. As the pilot Mark Finney hovers over a suspected minefield, the camera records 25 images per second. And one of the great, the great assets we've got here is that we can, sh we can show the mine clearers what's on the other side of the wood, what's on what's behind the hedge. Unlike a helicopter, it can hover over a minefield without sending a downdraft that could detonate mines. The first trials have gone smoothly, partly thanks to low-pressure helium, which means the airship can stay afloat even if it's shot. Like all former battlegrounds, Kosovo is awash with guns and men who need no excuse to use them. We have been shot at while we were here. We heard some uh, automatic gunfire in our vicinity, although we didn't see where it came from. Um, 
but it did encourage us to move locations rather rapidly. The aerial photographs taken by the airship are already making the D-miner's job easier. But it's the next stage of the trials that its makers hope will revolutionise mine clearance. This is the prototype for an airborne radar. It's designed to locate underground mines and bombs as it passes overhead. In trials in Britain, it successfully detected plastic mines as small as 10 centimetres wide. While a mine clearer on the ground can check just 45 square metres a day, the mine seeker, if successful, could check hundreds of square metres every second. For the first time uh, since the program started, we have had no casualties reported for a month. Now we've John Flanagan, the UN mine coordinator in Kosovo, believes this could change the mine problem worldwide. In some countries, they clear uh, thousands of, of hectares without finding a single mine, and that's the problem. If you've got technology like radar technology, which can, it won't tell you where exactly where every mine is, but it will help put you in the right place. Uh, and so we can save a lot of time and money uh, in, in putting the, the D miners in the right place. The mine clearers have set themselves a deadline of December to clear all the known UXO sites near towns and villages. Kosovo will never be completely safe from mines. Even Western Europe still has landmines from World War II. What they hope is that Kosovo will be no worse than a normal country. The effect that it can have on the community is huge. The Mines are, are a big problem um, across the world and when you can clear a village or can clear a, a city and you can actually see these people go from not being able to use their garden to now being able to use it and live, then it really does make a big difference. In a region so torn by war and ethnic violence, that is one hope worth fighting for.